Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fuel Efficient channel. If I sound a little bit tired or out of breath right now, I hope you guys don't mind because today is still July 1st, 2019, which means it is still my outing number 103 of this year. If you watched the previous video on the YouTube channel, well, that video for you guys, it has been two days for me it has been only about an hour and a half or so, right? But the bottom line is, we did really good in the morning. My dad, my mom, uh, myself, we caught a bunch of fish there at the James River, right? Intersection with the college, creek. We got some lunch. And I may have mentioned this in my uh, previous video here on the YouTube channel. My family and I, we're down here in Virginia. And we will be here on vacation until July 4th. So my sister got us this real nice house, right, inside this little, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a country club style place. And as you guys know, EPF, Extreme Field of Fishing, the first thing that I always do is I look up Google Maps, right? And I kind of check if there are any places around the area that I can go fishing, explore. And guess what? I found a real juicy, like, spot over here. I just hiked 15 minutes through the woods. I found a real juicy spot over here that I really believe, like this is serious, this is the real deal, this ain't no clickbait. I really believe that no one has ever fished this place, for real, because first it is in a private property, and number two, I had to hike through the woods 15 minutes through all kinds of weird ass bugs, right, and, uh, and torn, so you guys know what that means. So I'm going to give this place a go, let's get our stuff set up, hopefully there is some fish at the spot. Stay tuned. This entire area looks real good. The only problem is the access. I have really no access to the water over here. There's like a bunch of vegetation right in front of it. I will try my best to catch some fish over there if I'm able to reach it, right? And then there are some mystery uh, minnows over here, micros, that I also want to find out what they are. So let me get my stuff ready here and um, I guess we will really have to see what is out there. Brother, there's some thorns over here. Well, it is my personal belief that a very few people have fished this place. This place does seem to have some fish in it, although I have no idea what species it is. I just gotta drop a piece of shrimp out there, cause you know, that's all I got. This place really looks like a virgin place, meaning that very few people have fished over here before. Oh man, it is extremely shallow. <laughs> we'll see, man. Maybe something will come out of here. Oh, that was a hit. That was a hit. I got a hit. I got a hit. 100%. That, that's 100% a hit, dude. It's on. Fish on. First fish of the day coming up right here. I don't know what it is, dude. I just got a hit. I'm reeling real fast, dude. Real fast. Through the vegetation, son. Through the vegetation. I don't know what it is, dude. The fish is coming up here. Dude, what is this? Oh, my goodness, dude. Dude, it's a bullfin. Holy cow, bro. It is a baby bullfin. The Amia Calva. Goodness gracious, dude. And he's got a lot of vegetables in his, in his mouth too because I have to horse it in. Yo, there's some bullfin out there. Holy cow. On the shrimp. Wow, bro. I have to say, I have never in my life caught a bullfin on a piece of shrimp. I guess you can say that there's a first time for everything in life, dude. First time ever, I caught a bullfin on a piece of shrimp. And I may need my pliers to unhook this dude, man. All right, let me see if I can get it over here. Bullfin is known for having a vicious jaw. I got my little hook back. Dude, this is my first time catching a bullfin this small. But the cool thing about it, you know, they call this the dude. The Amia Calva, dude, this is so cool, bro. This is so cool. Let me see if I can release it over here for you guys. If I can go down here 
a little bit i'm gonna release it on this side but you know what folks just so you know this is all connected all right so this fish can go in here oh oh, oh dang dang dude oh it can go in here but this is all really all connected so you guys don't have to worry about this first fish of the day there's some fish in there that's fascinating that was a fish right over there that was a fish dude there's more fish in this little pond wow oh got a hit i got a hit i got a hit i got a hit i got a hit it's on boys it's on dude i have to horse it in because of the vegetation dude i don't know what it is but it's coming in dude i don't know what it is it's coming in dude it's coming in hop up here i hate to horse it in like this but when i don't have access it's another bowfin holy cow dude this bowfin are so hungry in this little pond that they're eating my shrimp like it owes them money look at this another amia calva i don't want to put my finger over there but dude it's another beautiful native bowfin <laughs> bro if you told me that i would be coming here to virginia with my family to catch bowfin the amicalva on pieces of shrimp i would certainly tell you dude son you are crazy that is never happening it is happening right now a lot of people tend to confuse the bowfin over here with the northern snakehead right the chana argus which is an invasive species of fish this one right here is not invasive, okay? I would like to emphasize that this is a native species to the United States of America and a beautiful one at that. Super aggressive, as you guys can see. And boy, they put up a fight. Very, very nice, man. That's dope. These are babies, right? They grow much, much bigger than that. Yo, dude, this is almost like cheating. I kind of feel like it. Because, you know, this isn't a private property, right? This little pond right here is actually a private property. And the only reason I can fish this pond is because my family rented a house in this private property. We're staying over here during our trip to Virginia. And let me tell you, even though this isn't the property, I had to hike quite a bunch to get over here. So, I mean... Who fishes this place, right? Nobody probably ever fishes this place. That's why the bowfin right now, they're, they're seeing the little pieces of shrimp, bro. Like something that they have never seen before. And, and they're hitting it. They're like, mm, 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 so yummy, you know? <laughs> That's crazy, dude. I really hope this is not the only species in here, but who knows? Dude, did you just see that? I mean, how do I know that one of those is not a redfin pickerel? You know what I'm saying? How do I know that one of those is not a redfin pickerel? That's my main question. Oh, I think I got a hit. Actually, I'm not so sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Come up here. Have to horse it. Horse it in, dude. Horse it in. This one's a little bit bigger. My goodness, dude, what is it? It's a little bit big. Oh, dude, it's a nicer bowfin. I'm gonna bring this dude up, I mean, you know. Oh my goodness, dude. Can I really bring this dude up? It's thrashing all over. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Dang, bro. Bro, bro, okay, I, I'm not so sure if I can horse it in my stuff in now with my, uh, with my St. Croix Avid Pearl, dude. You know, I thought maybe there were some small ones. I'm using a Livio 2500. <sighs> this is like a, this is like a whoo, medium light, bro. <sighs> Look at the size of this bowfin, man. This is like a two. It's like a two and a half pounder, dude. 
two and a half pounder both in on the shrimp if you can pull a fish like this out of this little pond right here it really makes me think what else is in it so I would say that this bowl fish is in the range of two pounds maybe two pounds on the dot let's give it a quick measure over here I want to find out how big this bowl fin is so we have uh, 2.38 minus 0.11, 2.27, right? So about a two pounder bowfin, which is absolutely not bad at all, okay? For a little pond like this, man. This is, this is a beautiful fish right here. Look at the dot at the tail. Look at that dot. Holy cow, bro. All right, let's release this fish over here. Like I said, you guys have nothing to worry about because these watersheds over here are all connected. So, dang, dude, I can't, I can't believe it. You know, when I saw this fish coming out, I was like, wow, dude, this is a beautiful fish. Look at that, oh, the bowfin, mighty bowfin. Oh, 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 he's pissed, dude. Oh my goodness, okay, 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 okay. No, no, it took my gripper, bro. It took my gripper. What am I gonna do now, it took my gripper? No, wait a moment. I'll try to get my gripper back. We can't leave this fish here with a gripper in its mouth, dude. Dude, I cannot believe this. Years I have been fishing. I have never had a fish take my damn grippers like this, bro. Yes. Years I have been fishing. I have never had a fish take my grippers, bro. Hell no, dude. I ain't gonna let this fish live with my grippers down there. No way, no way. So I got the bowfin back with my rod. Holy moly, bro. I just saved this bowfin from living with a gripper with a permanent piercing in its mouth for the rest of its life. All right, so let me just release it over here. I know this bowfin's super tired. Let me release the bowfin over here without the grippers, okay? exactly you can go now don't show me no attitude okay oh my goodness that's crazy bro i almost took my rapala grippers Whew. boy it is hot out here i'm all dirty i'm covered in bugs although i did spray myself with the bug spray all these years that i have been fishing i have never had a fish take my fish grippers with the fish in the water that is to show you guys how savage the bowfin is all right anyways let's shift gears a little bit and do some more multi-species fishing and see really if there's anything else around here right for example aka the redfin pickerel the Ezox americanus right or if there are really just bowfin around this area Bro, oh, I'm just here chilling, fishing, and suddenly I kind of realized that these moths or butterflies or whatever, they really like these balls, man. You see, there's just something about these particular balls, dude. They're just sucking on them so hard. Look at that. Dang, bro. You see all that sucking action? I don't really even care about the camera. Look at that ball so good these balls dude the sucking action so intense they don't even care about the camera look at that wow now that is interesting oh i got a hit i got a hit observing the the moth sucking the ball so much i forgot about my fishing rod gosh darn it my line is nagged on the plant oh my goodness my line is nagged on the plant bro I got a hit and my line is nagged around the torrents. There's no good, there's no good boot. Oh yes, yeah, it's out, it's out, it's out, it's out. Is the fish still on? Oh dude, this fish is not on, dude. Oh man, I got so distracted with the, with the, with the little butterflies here sucking the balls, dude. I, I, I miss my fish, dang. Well, needless to say, the fish took my shrimp. Holy moly. Yeah, shrimp disappeared, bro. Fish took my shrimp 100%. Look at that. 
Dang, it's all your fault. You see, all three of you over here. Yo, it's all your fault for sucking the ball so good, bro. I was paying attention to you sucking on these balls right over here, dude. I, I missed my fish. Yo, it's all. All right, let's rebate. Hmm, the struggle is real. I've been out here for about 90 minutes. Caught a bunch of bullfin on that fishing rod over there. I know for a fact that there's a bunch of bullfin in this little pond because I see them jump from time to time. And then I thought, well, maybe instead of jigging the shrimp and just living down there still fishing, maybe a bullhead is going to bite, right? Haven't gotten a bite ever since. So I see a few micros over here. I just tied on my Tanago hook, as you guys can see. I'm going to do a little bit of micro fishing, do a little bit of steel fishing in hopes of catching some new species. Wow, dude, Eastern mosquito fish on the Tanago. I think that's the only species around here because, you know, I haven't seen anything other than Eastern mosquito fish, the Gambusia Holbrooki, in terms of micro fishing. Well, you know where this sucker is going. This sucker is going directly on that rod. Mm, there's one on, on the live mosquito fish. On the gambusia, dude. Oh, it got off. No, it's still on. I thought it got off, but it's still on. There's a big one, dude. I don't think I would be able to, to bring this one in through the vegetation, dude. Oh, there's a big one, dude. Uh, I don't know, man. It nailed that uh, mosquito fish, but yeah, I don't think I would be able to bring it here. Let's see. Oh, dude. It's, it's there. You know, it's just... Oh, I'm dragging it, dude. I'm dragging it. Oh, that's big, dude. I hope my St. Croix don't break. Okay, it's all or nothing, dude. All or nothing. Holy no, dude. The St. Croix did not break. Holy cow, dude. Yo, when you microfish, when you microfish, that's the bonus of microfishing, you know? Holy cow, dude. That's the biggest one of the day. Hands down. Well, you're micro fish, my man, let me tell you. I just caught with the little rod, the Eastern mosquito fish. Booyah. Beautiful, fat bullfin right over here, dude. Look at the size of this creature right here, huh? And I'm running out of time too, so my family already called me. They said it's time to go eat dinner. This is gonna be the last one of the day. Oh, man, you know, folks. I've been using mustad hooks for a long, long time. Look at that, little size 10 mustad hook right over here. I always list it in the description of the videos. Little size 10 hook with a live Eastern mosquito fish on it, the Gambusia Holbrooki. Look at that, huh? Biggest bullfin of the day, the Amia Calva. I'm about to leave. This is truly a dinosaur. Native species to the United States of America, right? And uh, such a beautiful fish. It almost feels like there, there's an armor on this fish's body. And there is plenty more. There are plenty more over there, dude. You lifeline a little mosquito fish, they'll certainly bite. All right, let me take a shot at this guy and we're going to release it. Well, before I leave, this is the biggest one of the day. I mean, we have to get a measurement of this bad boy right over here i would say in the range of three pounds uh before this one the biggest one was two pounds yeah i would say maybe three pounds on the dot so let's see what we got here we got dude say what 3.17 right very accurate right plus minus one one 3.05 three pounds on the dot so biggest fish of the day turned out to be a three pounder both in all right this is such a beautiful specimen man such dinosaurs i'm going to release it over here and it is about time for me to leave as well not gonna make the same mistake as i did before for this one i am going to release the boga <laughs> oh damn 
think, bro, he splashed my shoes, dude. Yo, I would get your great-grandfather for what you did just now. You lucky I need to go eat buffet with my parents. Yeah, all right. We got some Jurassic noises coming from the background over here. <laughs> it is time for me to go. Um, this afternoon fishing session was phenomenal, to say the least. Uh, lots of fish, lots of bowfin, right? Well, the action was as hot as the mosquito bite, right? This is all I have to say. I, I really hiked through the woods to get over here. And even though I spray myself with a lot of bug spray, the mosquitoes really ate me alive. Only the Lord knows how many ticks I have on me at the moment, which is why I have to get out of here as fast as possible, take a, an amazing shower, and then go have some dinner with my family. Man, I am exhausted, right? But you guys saw it in this video. Sometimes exploring really brings you great rewards. This little watershed right over here, I dare I say, very few people have fished it before. If not, maybe I don't even know if people have ever fished this place or not. It is in the middle of the woods, okay? And I had to hike like 15 minutes using Google Maps just to get here, which is why I was just casting down there. And you know, it was like bowfin after bowfin after bowfin, right? They were just biting on my stuff because you know, they're so hungry in there. So I always tell my subscribers, right? When you have a chance to go out and explore, why wouldn't you do so? Sometimes, sure, you go out and you don't find anything. Other times, just like this fishing video, you may just find a very juicy honey hole, right? So thank you very much for watching this video, folks. I appreciate it. Tie lines. I'll bring you guys, hopefully, some more Virginia videos, okay? Take it easy. Oh, it's still biting zone. This one's on. Boy, finally. Oh, double up. We got a double up here. Oh, hell yeah. You guys see down there? Double up, son. Very nice.